One great thing about being a piano teacher is that I get to really study the learning process. That's why I often, often say that I don't teach piano, I teach the student because everybody's a little different in how they learn and where they are in their own journey. And that's what uh, keeps it so fresh for me. It's, it's at every moment finding, you know, what's the right way to say this or to bring this or to introduce this concept or, you know, um, someone, uh, two people want to learn how to uh, play scales in all 12 keys, for instance. Well, maybe one of them needs to just do one hand at a time and then later on bring them together. And the other one, okay, we can start with both hands together or, you know, whatever. Um, that's just one example, but it's, uh, it's that kind of thing. How do we learn? A few years ago, I remember I was talking to somebody and they asked just a sort of general question about me and it was in a little, little meeting I was at at a, a school I was teaching at the time. And they said, what's one thing that you know really well? And I thought, I said, you know what? I know how to learn. I know how to learn. That's one thing I've been interested in. Even since my college days, I know. I remember thinking about that as a college student. So um, one thing I've noticed uh, it's especially true among adults, um, but also with, with uh, some kids. And uh, it's, it's not always a great thing, sort of, but, uh, but it's maybe necessary in some ways. Is that, you know, a, a, I don't know, a while back, people started talking about, quote, learning styles, you know? Uh, it's a good thing, too. So, you, you know, you'd have a consultant maybe come to a business and have a, a day-long retreat or something. You know, you hear about this at big business, and they would say, okay, we're gonna identify everybody's learning style. So, okay, you do these exercises, and then you realize you're uh, a visual learner, or I'm a step-by-step -step learner, or I'm an experiential learner. I like to get my hands dirty and do it, right? Or somebody needs to, um, an auditory learner. You know, I can learn by listening more, right? And that that's great. That can, if you have to learn something quickly or in a way that's in that moment comfortable for you, then yeah, if you know that you learn things better by reading them than hearing them or vice versa, go for it, right? There's nothing wrong with that. And that's what I would call sort of like learning 101. Learning 101. Like there was a class at a college on how to learn. The first entry level class it would be learning 101 what style of learner you are. Um, at the same time, I think that in music especially, but maybe everything, but especially music, um, we're really going to get somewhere when we go beyond that. We're going to fill in not just the things we can't do and learn them, but also the ways of learning. So for instance, somebody who's really good at sight reading needs to develop their ear. And they might learn music quicker and better by reading it. And if you have a gig and you have to learn some music, get the sheet music, absolutely. But if you really want to develop yourself as a musician and become at a much higher level, you're going to develop your ear, right? And, and sure enough, the greatest musicians have great ears, definitely, whether they can read or not, you know? On the other hand, if you're growing up and you're almost 90 to 95% or 100% an ear learner, you will probably benefit from learning how to sight read at some point because there's going to be some things your ear can't really hear and you'll always get those sort of wrong. I remember when I was playing on Broadway, there were some great actors and actresses who couldn't read music and sometimes they would learn tricky parts or a little interval wrong here and there and they'd do it consistently in the same kind of thing. You know, they'd always sing a seventh as a sixth or something like that. So I invite you to fill in the type of uh, learning style that doesn't come as natural to you and try to understand things from uh, the other side. If you like to know the theory about things before you dive into a song, sometimes play a song without doing that first, even if you feel a little bit lost, because something in you will absorb it in a different way that's not going through the same part of your brain, right? Because we only use part of our, our resources, you know, our of who we are anyway. So um, you see it kind of clearly, you know, sometimes um, it's, it's a little sad sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to some school teachers I know and they'll say, you know, I was teaching math today and um, I was trying to explain a problem and this like, you know, seven year old kid said, oh no, 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 I'm a visual learner. And you know, and the teacher's like, well, wait, you can listen to me <laughs> explain it, right? You have to learn how to do that, right? So kids learn, by, how do we learn language? We learn by reading, we learn by writing. Little kid's not going to say, no, I'm not going to learn how to spell that word because I'm an auditory learner, you know? But as adults, we often do that. 
So I invite you to uh, gradually relax your learning style and bring in other ways of learning and you'll go a lot farther with your music, I promise. <laughs>